Hi everyone. Creationists have this crazy idea that... Okay, one of the crazy ideas they have is that all they have to do to prove that their demonstrably false fairy tales are true is show that the Earth isn't four and a half billion years old. And of course they fail miserably. Here's an example, the receding moon argument. As the moon orbits the Earth, its gravitational influence on the Earth is stronger on the side facing toward it. This causes the oceans to form bulges that rotate along with the moon. This is what causes tides. As the Earth spins around its own axis, friction between the solid crust and the oceans push the bulges forward, causing them to end up ahead of the moon. But it also slows down the Earth's rotation. This drains angular momentum from the Earth to the moon, which accelerates and moves to a higher orbit. In the animation, the effect is of course highly exaggerated. In reality, every year the moon recedes by 3.8 centimeters and the Earth's rotation period goes up by 15 microseconds. According to creationists, this disproves the idea of a 4.5 billion year old Earth because 1.3 billion years ago the moon would have been so close that it would have been inside the Roche limit. That means the tidal forces caused by the Earth's gravitational pull would have ripped it apart. It could never have formed closer to the Earth than the Roche limit, which is 18,000 kilometers, give or take. Now, radiometric dating tells us that both the Earth and the Moon are about 4.5 billion years old, so clearly we have a problem here. Is the evolutionist model internally inconsistent? Well, let's start by checking the math. The Moon is 384,000 kilometers away. With a constant rate of recession, it would have been about 335,000 kilometers away 1.3 billion years ago. That's 87% of its current distance. Okay, maybe they mean that the rate of recession hasn't been constant. Though they certainly seem to imply that. But, okay, let, let's see if we can find the math they used to come up with this 1.3 billion year figure. Huh. For once, the creationists actually bother showing the math, both at Answers in Genesis and Creation Ministries International. And yeah, it looks like it checks out. According to this, 1.3 billion years ago, the moon would have been well inside the Roche limit. In fact, practically skimming the surface of the Earth. However, Louis Slichter wrote in 1963 that the age of the Earth-Moon system is a problem. But this problem would be solved if it could be demonstrated that the breaking effects of the tides could somehow have been lower in the past. If the moon receded slower in the past, 1.3 billion years becomes a minimum age rather than a maximum age. In 1980, Kurt Lambeck suggested that a variable energy sink could solve this problem, and the Earth's oceans are just that as the continents move over time. In 1982, Kirk Hansen showed in a mathematical model where the Earth has one single continent that if that continent is located at one of the poles, the Moon will recede slower than if it's at the equator. Even though this model isn't accurate, it proves that continental drift has to be taken into account because it does have a significant effect on the Moon's recession. The equation the creationists use, which doesn't take this into account, was presented by creationist physicist Don DeYoung in 1990, eight years after Hansen showed that it would have to. Thomas Barnes, another creationist physicist, did something similar back in 1982, citing Slichter's work from 63, pointing out his problem two years after Lambic solved it. And of course, neither of them bothered with that pesky peer review thing. Interesting. Furthermore, in 1994, Kagan and Maslova used a model with multiple continents and showed that this gives a significantly greater breaking effect, that is, lower tidal dissipation, than just one, which means that the moon must have been receding slower in the past, since the current distribution of the continents is quite unusual. Throughout most of Earth's history, the continents have been clumped together. Now, of course, all the math in the world isn't going to help if the evidence doesn't support it. So is there evidence supporting these more advanced models? Yep. 
For one, it's compatible with the results obtained through radiometric dating, which indicate an old Earth and Moon. But there's also this thing called tidal rhythmites. Tides deposit fine layers of sediment on a daily basis that vary in thickness and composition with the seasons. These seasonal changes result in annual layers, it's just like tree rings. Under the right conditions, which are quite rare, even the daily layers can be preserved, allowing geologists to count the daily layers within the annual layers. This way we can know how many days there were in a year when those layers were formed. 620 million years ago there were 400 days in a year, which corresponds to an average lunar recession rate of about 2.2 centimeters per year since then. That's about half the current rate. From 2.45 billion to 620 million years ago, the average rate was even lower. CMI actually responds to this by saying it already assumes an old Earth, meaning it can't be used to prove an old Earth. That would be circular. Of course, in reality, what you do is you have a model that says there should have been a few more days in a year half a billion years ago or something like that. You count the layers and date the rocks and see that the results, 400 days, 620 million years ago, are consistent with the prediction. 600 days at that time would have been a problem. There's nothing circular about this. The model was subjected to a test that could have falsified it and it passed. What would be circular is to say that this evidence can't be reliable since we know the Earth is young. We know the Earth is young because the Bible says so. We know it's true because it's the Word of God. We know it's the Word of God because it says so. We know it's true because it's the Word of God. We know it's the Word of God because it says so. We know it's true because it's the Word of God. We know it's the Word of God because it says so. We know it's true because it's the Word of God. We know it's the Word of God because it says so. We know it's true because it's the Word of God.